Good morning, it's Monday the 6th of February, and welcome to our regular Monday morning roundup of the coming week's economic highlights. As always, we'll start with a quick rundown of the key economic numbers being issued this week around the world's markets, and then we'll dive into some of the more significant highlights afterwards with our own thoughts and analysis. So, as always, let's get straight to it. So, the economic numbers being issued this week start today with an update on Australian retail sales. We'll also hear from Germany and their factory orders, and the Eurozone's retail sales and their investor confidence. It's interest rate decision day in Australia on Tuesday, and we'll be giving our own thoughts on that afterwards. Tuesday also sees the release of the German industrial production figures, and Fed Chair Powell will be delivering his speech. On Wednesday, we'll hear the EIA crude oil inventories, on Thursday, it's German inflation and US jobless claims. And the end of the week brings key figures from both China and the UK, with inflation and GDP respectively, both of which we'll discuss towards the end of today's video in more detail. Also on Friday, the Canadian jobs data and Michigan confidence figures over in the US. And the companies that we'll hear trading updates from this week start today with Activation Blizzard, Pinterest and Tyson Food. And oil major BP released their full year earnings on Tuesday, and we'll be giving our thoughts on this in a moment. Also on Tuesday, results are due from Nintendo, Royal Caribbean, SoftBank and DuPont. Disney released their Q1 results on Wednesday, and Uber their Q4s, and they're both of which we'll take a look at in more detail afterwards. Also on Wednesday, results are due from CVS Health, Robinhood, Barrett Development, Ashmore, on Thursday, PayPal and Unilever are both due to release their end of year results, and we'll be discussing these later on with our own thoughts. Thursday also sees releases from PepsiCo, Credit Suisse, AstraZeneca and L'Oreal. And finally on Friday, we'll hear from Enbridge. Well, after the central bank bonanza last week and the string of big tech earnings, this week appears relatively quiet in comparison. Investors will continue digesting the moves by the Bank of England, the ECB and the Fed and what they mean for the market. Earnings are also slowing, but there are still some big names due to report this week, including BP, Disney and Unilever. So let's take a look at this week's bigger stories in more detail. Well, it's interest rate decision day in Australia on Tuesday. In the December RBA meeting, the central bank warned that if inflation continued to rise, more interest rate increases were likely. Policymakers also raised concerns over high levels of consumer spending. Since then, the latest inflation data showed that consumer prices jumped to a higher than expected 8.4% in Q4, raising expectations of additional rate hikes. However, retail sales fell for the first time in 2022, tumbling by a larger than expected 3.9%. That's the biggest fall since August 2020. Though inflation is expected to have peaked, the RBA is still expected to raise rates by 25 basis points to 3.35%, potentially with more hikes to follow. And expectations are high on Tuesday for BP's Q4 and full year's earnings after Piers, Shell, ExxonMobil and Chevron all reported record profits. Despite oil and gas prices falling, the BP share price has rallied 17% since August on optimism surrounding China's reopening and a slowdown in central bank rate hikes. Expectations are for an annual underlying replacement cost profit to more than double to $27.72 billion compared to 2021. Investors are likely to remain focused on buybacks and dividends. The extraordinary scale of earnings has renewed criticism and sparked calls for another big oil windfall tax. BP could also upset climate activists by cutting back on the green shift to commit to maximising profit. Disney is due to report fiscal Q1 earnings on Wednesday, while they come as the share price has risen over 20% in January and after Bob Iger returned as CEO. The results also come as activist investor Nelson Petz, or Peltz rather, is pushing for change. Disney prioritised streaming growth in 2022 and achieved the most subscribers in the industry in Q3 2022 and Q4 with 235.7 million total members, ahead of Netflix's 223.8 million. 
However, this quarter could be a tough one, with subscribers set to fall by 400,000. Disney has signaled that it needs to make streaming more profitable as subscriber numbers slip. Wall Street expecting earnings per share of 79 cents on revenues of $23.45 billion. That's a 7.2% rise from last year. Well, Uber is due to report its Q4 results after the market close also on Wednesday. Well, the ride-hailing app will need to convince investors that demand can remain strong in 2023, even as fears over recession build. Wall Street is expecting bookings to climb 19% from 2022 to $30.7 billion. This would mark the sixth straight quarter of slowing growth as food delivery demand continues to cool after booming across the pandemic and as the recovery in ride-hailing starts to moderate. Its freight business, which has been delivering annual growth of 200 to 400% over the past year, will also see a slowing of growth to 55%. In Q4, total revenue expected to rise 47% to $8.5 billion. Meanwhile, adjusted earnings expected to come in at $618.6 million, a new record high. The outlook for Q1 will be key. The market is still looking for gross bookings of $31.8 billion and adjusted profit of $609.6 million. PayPal is due to report Q4s on Thursday and is expected to see total payment values price slow as consumer spending also slows. This would be in line with trends also seen at Visa and MasterCard. PayPal has already downwardly revised its annual revenue growth target to 10%. However, it's also lifted its earnings per share target to between $4.07 to $4.09 as it improves operational efficiency and removes some unprofitable clients. Wall Street is expecting that revenue to rise 7.1% to $7.4 billion and a 7.7% rise in adjusted EPS to $1.20. The share price trades down 30% across the past year, but up 14% so far in 2023. And the consumer goods giant Unilever is due to report full year results on Thursday, which comes just days after the company said the Aeron non-executive director, Hein Schumacher, is to take over as CEO from Alan Jope in July. Consensus estimates are for underlying sales growth to rise 8.8%, largely driven by double-digit price increases, which would offset volume declines as cash-strapped shoppers rein in the spending. Underlying profit margins are expected to be around 16% compared to 18.4% in 2021. Futures guidance will also be in focus, with current estimates anticipating sales growth of 4.3%, and an underlying profit margin of 16.6% for the forthcoming year. Finally, attention will also be on Unilever's 3 billion euro share buyback programme. And finally, on Friday, the latest GDP figures from the UK are due for release. Well, the UK economy shrank 0.3% in Q3 quarter on quarter as persistently high inflation and rising interest rates squeeze household incomes, resulting in consumers reining in spending. The UK is on the brink of a recession, two straight quarters of neg negative growth and is expected to shrink again in, in Q4, meaning a recession. Well, the downturn is expected to last across 2023. Last week, the IMF downwardly revised UK GDP for 2023 to a 0.6% contraction, meaning that the UK is the only G7 nation that is expected to contract in 2023. And finally, China's latest inflation figures will be released at the end of this week, and Chinese inflation rose in December to 1.8% year-on-year, up from 1.6% as COVID restrictions were removed and the economy reopened. And this was below the People's Bank of China's 2% target. However, inflation in China could continue to accelerate as the reopening ramps up, which could in turn mean that global inflation gets a second wind. Investors will be watching the CPI figure closely. Hotter than expected inflation could unnerve the markets. So those were the big stories of the week. Let's wrap up with a quick look at the dividend announcements due out this week. Well, there are no releases due in the FTSE 100 again this week, but in the FTSE 250, we'll hear from Virgin Money, Greencoat, Henderson Smaller Companies Investment Trust, GCP Infrastructure Investment, Octopus Renewables Infrastructure Trust, Impacts Environmental Markets, UK Commercial Property Right, and last but not least, Target Healthcare Right. So there you have it. It's a relatively quiet week this week on most fronts, other than a few key results. We'll be watching BP's results closely, as I'm sure will the government. 
As the oil and gas industry announces record-breaking profits across the board once again, the consumer, read the voter, struggles to pay their heating bills, which means the calls for the government to return to that milking stool once more and grab those bulging corporate udders with yet another windfall tax in the future will, I'm sure, reappear yet again. But of course, the longer term price for doing that is just to drive these companies to pastures elsewhere. And it's the old trope of short, t short termism versus long termism once again. So in the meantime, if you're particularly interested in short termism, then don't forget about our app delivering you our award winning trading signals, which are, of course, free to receive and use. And of course, if long termism is also your bag, then don't forget you can always get in touch with us here at Atlantic Capital Markets if you're interested in receiving our expert advice and guidance in the markets. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button to make sure that you do not miss out on our regular financial updates with our expert market analysis and opinions. So until next time, thanks so much for watching from all of us here at Atlantic Capital Markets. Have yourself a great week.